come out of her, my people. All truth is not kind here. There's a bitter truth as well as a sweet truth. Come out of her, my people. Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Greetings to each and every last one of you. I hope that you, you, and you are able to hear the broadcast pretty good and that I'm coming in pretty good. If I'm coming in pretty good in your area, let me know. But I tell you what, what a day today, huh? I mean, um, you, you can't help. Um, you cannot help. You cannot help but to try to say that these people are, yeah, I mean, a stage shooting. I mean, because... And, and now everybody is calling because, you know, as soon as Obama gets in office, everybody, the first thing everybody does is they want to go run and they want to go um, buy a bunch of guns, which you can't blame them. And the American citizens are, are, are saying, but, you know, you have a bunch of liberals and the majority of the people in this country um, that we call America, the majority of people we have in this country we call America don't have a clue, uh, a much less an, an, an idea of, of what's going on. Um, and I kid you not, we are in some serious trouble. We are in some very, very serious trouble, people. I told you all exactly what was going to happen. Um, and, and, you know, they're coming for the guns. And, and hey, they've done it in all the other countries and stuff. There's only one thing about it. I think that no matter what in this country, and this is where I believe that the populace is, I think that if they try to come for the guns or they ban the guns in, here in America, in this country, um, I think it's going to be a lot of bloodshed. I really that that's going to be the revolution in this country. Uh, I don't care how many false flags, how many things that they put forth and um, on us. Um, you know, like I said, I told people ain't no need in belly aching when you go to these. You allow your children to go to these schools to get shot up when the safest place for them to be is at home. So no matter what false flags that they may have. Uh, no matter what they be trying to put forth in their agenda, um, if you was a mother and you really truly cared about your children in this environment, you would be homeschooling your children. Um, how I hear all the excuses, I hear what everybody else is saying. I b- believe me, I understand. Um, but hey, they're doing exactly what they want, um, and pretty soon we'll be like Australia. If people let them. We'll be sitting up there throwing sticks and rocks and carrying on each other. Over in England, they they taking pictures of their gun connections, and then they regret that they ever gave the things up. And of course, if you give the gov- you give the guns all to the government and the military, you know you got this Braveheart situation all over again. Or you got Edward Longshanks and all the other people and the powers that be. They have all the control of, of everything that there is on this earth. Um, and, and and I'm telling you, the, the guns are the last staple of freedom. 
last staple of freedom. And, again, see, um, and this letting you know that these psychopaths, they can just go off anywhere, anywhere, anytime, anywhere. But all you Israelites that are listening to me, if you are listening to me, but but I tell you, um, I, you know, there are a lot of people that they run their mouth. We got a lot of people who carry guns, and they'll carry guns, but it's only for a show. I promise it is. Um, but most people don't have the type of integrity of heart, mind, and spirit that if um, government, law enforcement, whoever it is, if they come for your guns, most of them don't have the integrity uh, to stand up and, if necessary, um, have to defend yourself from all enemies, foreign and domestic. Most people would freely hand over their guns uh, just to live and have another breath here in his life. Now, will you die? Sure, you may die. Um, you may die, but but you'll be free. Uh, either way it goes. Um, and I've searched these scriptures, and I don't think that the Most High Yah is going to cast any of his Israelite uh, people, of course, especially after the message we heard last week. I don't think he'll cast any of us in the eternal lake of fire for actually um, defending ourselves like we said. You see, people get the gospel and the dispensation of time of the gospel mixed up. And they try to make everybody here in the United States all the saints out of Jesus. And we're not Jesus. We're disciples. Um, he knows our frame that we are but dust. And um, nobody, nobody uh, in that book has ever uh, told us any kind of way until the Greeks got a hold of it and, and took it, uh, the books of the Apocrypha. You notice there's a reason why the books of the Apocrypha are out, right? Uh, because Judas Maccabeus, you know, he, he turned around and he sent it up a revolt. Some people chose to die. Some people chose to eat swine flesh rather than obey Yah. Some people chose to accept their license. But then we saw some other Israelites that chose to accept death. They chose to fight on the Sabbath day. They chose all the righteous things to do. Now, that's my kind of man and woman. That's, that's my kind of man. And that's what Pastor Dow is going to be choosing um, if necessary. They have to come down to it. Um, we're going to die one day anyway. Um, but I tell you what, I'm gonna live free, um, and, and I and I, I'm gonna live free. I'm gonna live free. I promise you that. Um, and I can tell you right now, I'd be damned if I'm gonna be serving on my knees. I done had enough slaveries. Did y'all hear what I said? But I've had enough slaveries. I've had enough captivities. I had enough of reading about the history. Um, perpetu- all the injustices perpetuated on my natural Hebrew people. Um, I, 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 I'm sick of slavery. I'm sick of bondage. Um, and I'm going to tell you right now that, that Pastor Dow, I'm not going into no damn captivity. I'm not going into no slavery. I'm not going into no bondage. Um, I lived 46 years. Thank the Father for giving me 46 years. Um, but I'm going to tell you right now, uh, that Pastor Dow, I'm, I'm not going to be serving nobody on my knees. Um, the days of slavery, the days of captivity, over the only other captivity I'm going to ever be under, and that's the willful captivity of having my name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life and being a servant of the Most High Yah, the Yahshua Hamashiach, the Christ that is coming. And y'all hear me pretty good? Good. All right. Um, but I got my mind made up. My mind has been made up for quite some time. Uh, I study. I see exactly what's going on. Um, I understand what's going on to people. Uh, and believe me, like I said, a lot of people, you know, they talk a good talk. And a lot of people talk about what they're going to do. But you, you find most people, all they do is run their mouth. That's about it. When it comes time to the nitty-gritty and it comes time for war and it comes time to uh, shutting up your mouth and, and raising up your hands or anything, there ain't too many men left in this country uh, that we call America. I promise you that. Uh, there ain't too many of them that's got that kind of spirit in them. Um, live or die. But I tell you, it's a sad thing. They're gonna, like I told you, they're gonna be using this tragedy, this shooting, and this killing, um, this murder that went on. Um, you, you're gonna have all these wicked liberals and all these faggots and homosexuals coming out in groves. Uh, and they're going to be lobbying these 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 wicked. They're going hey, hey, gun laws, gun laws, gun laws, gun laws. And of course, the uh, guns only going to be in the hand of the criminals. And that's just it. Um, but hey, that's just part of it. 
I feel sorry for the people that that lost but lost their lives, especially children. Huh? Somebody said that President Obama. Did y'all see that? That um. Did, did President Obama? Did he get on the camera and start crying today? Huh? Did anybody see him start crying today and started shedding alligator tears and showing everybody that saw? Oh man! But you know it's a damn shame. Why, if he gonna sit there and do all that crying, why come he ain't crying for all these um, drone attacks that he has to sign off on before um, our, our country can actually go put, uh, sign these uh, attacks to uh, these drones to attack innocent civilians in Afghanistan and 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 um, Iran? I mean Iraq. Uh, he, he's killing and murdering people left and right and gunning down people innocent to be. You know these devils are something else. They are the father, the devil, and I can't wait till the Messiah come. I really, truly can't wait till he comes. Um, because when he comes, it's going to be, I'm telling you, it's going to be, I, it is going to be bloodshed, real true bloodshed. And the Most High is going to fix this thing in one day. I promise you he is. He's going to fix this thing in one day. But y'all see what we're up against, right? You see what we're up against. Some of us are going to have to seal our testimony. Uh, that's all there is to it. So just make sure that if you have to die, you have to go, and y'all going to die. We're all going to die anyway. You have to go. Make sure you die and you go right. Um, now, listen to me for a second. I'm going to say something. All right, I'm going to say something. That's the reason why that when you read the New Testament that has been given to us, remember, these are letters of sanctification, but the Scriptures is what cannot be broken. Did y'all hear me? By the time the Romans and the Greeks got a hold of the New Testament, and they translated, and then by the time the slave masters got a hold of it, they have just done a hack butcher job on the whole renewed covenant. And they've done it to sway and persuade and to change your mind. But the Apostle Paul left us plenty of nuggets inside of those scriptures, of those letters that he wrote. When he said that all scripture is given by inspiration of Yah, and these scriptures are profitable for correction and instruction. He didn't say that the letters are profitable for correction and instruction. You know you can trust the portion of the renewed covenant when it is backed up by the scripture. Because the scripture is not going to be broken. That same Jesus Christ who gave us the scripture on Mount Sinai, um, when he was sitting on the throne, as Almighty Yahweh himself, hey, that's the same one that came in the flesh. And when he told us, and this is what a lot of people don't like hearing, when he told us clearly over in John the 8th chapter, when he looked at those Jews, are y'all listening to me? Y'all listening to me. When he looked at those Jews and he said that you are of your father, the devil, do you know that he knew full well who he was talking about? and who he was talking to. What is appalling to me today is that we read these scriptures, we read this gospel, we read the very words of Christ ourselves, and we overlook, for some reason, we overlook his words. And, and I think it's, it's come because of that word I keep using all the time, you know, collusion, and, and we have been conditioned in this country. We have been conditioned in this country um, to, to, I mean, Look what Christianity has done. It's so jacked up, and yet and still, if we're not careful, we still got some of that residue on us in Christianity. We really, truly do. We got some of that residue on us still even till today that we have to fight and struggle just to even believe the Scriptures, and it's just a sad, sad, sad thing. But Jesus said to those scribes and Pharisees of his day, I want you all to listen to me. Ye of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. Now, wait a minute. Why do you automatically make the assumption, and why do you assume that he's talking about the people that are his sheep? Because apparently these people are not his sheep. Are you following me? These are not his sheep. And when he told the people he came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, he did not come. I'm getting ready to say something. Are you all ready? Are y'all ready? He did not come for the seed of Edom. He did not come for Canaanite 
Edomite. Did y'all hear what I said? He did not come from Canaanite Edomites. Are you following me? And the Edomites today are the people who you call Jewish people. Did y'all hear me? The Edomites today are who you call Jewish people. You see, if you went to Atlanta and you caught that message and that I did immediately after Atlanta, I uncovered and told the truth that this world, I'm sure somebody's probably mentioned it before because there ain't nothing new under the sun. But I tell you one thing, I don't put connect the dots. I don't put this thing together. Esau has done set and stole his birthright and has practiced replacement theology. That's what Esau has done. And Esau has turned around, and, and he's got the rulership of this world and this earth. But make no mistake about it. Esau married Canaanite. Judah married a Canaanite. All of them having Hebrew blood in them. And they all assume, and when you put it all and you connect all the dots, when you see how David fought against those Edomites, see, they were, they were Canaanites first, then they end up being Edomites because of Esau. And now you got people who think it because their father is Esau that they have right to the birthright. Huh? And you got people, I mean, this is just jacked up, left and right. I mean, you, you just think about what, what Jesus did. He turned around and he said, they are bold not in the truth because there is no truth in him. And when he speaks of the lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Huh? Uh, do you all understand that kind of talk? Do you understand that kind of talk? Huh? I, I tell you what, I am up against a serious spirit in, in this time that I'm living in. And, and I'm believing that the Most High Yah has given me such a level of the spirit of truth that I feel like, man, that these people are going to treat me like they did the apostles and the prophets. Because, you know, the world hates truth. They can't take it, can't stand it. Um, and anyone who stands for the truth, man, they, oh, man, you, you, you first become an enemy of all the people who are religious. That's your number one enemy right there. Huh? That's your number one enemy. And let, let let me go. Let, let me let me let me let me go to another passage of scripture. Okay, y'all go to John, the second chapter. I want to show you something else. I'm gonna show you something else. Okay, I want everybody to go to John. Get your Bible. Get your, if you have your Bible, type in the word Bible. Uh, we're not gonna be destroyed for a lack of knowledge under my watch. I'm telling you. We ain't going to be destroyed for lack of knowledge. If you're listening to Pastor Dow, you have met a real, true, biblical Israelite, a pastor that Yah has given to us according to his own heart. And I guarantee that. Now, you watch this. John, the second chapter. I'm going to start at verse 12. All right, let's read along. And after this, he went down to Capernaum, he and his mother, and his brethren, and his disciples. And they continued there not many days. And watch this. And the Jews' Passover was at hand. Now, listen to me. Don't you automatically assume. Are y'all listening to me? Don't you automatically assume that he's talking about, this Bible is talking about the same Passover that we Israelites keep. Did you hear me? Uh, it said the Jews' Passover was at hand. And what we do, is, it's just like the Christians do today. They automatically assume the Bible is an Israelite, I mean, is a Christian Bible. They assume that. They assume that Jesus was a Christian. They assume that. They assume that Abraham was a Jew. See, that's the assumption of today. Everybody believes this stuff. They, they, they just assume these things. There ain't no biblical back and forth, but they just assume it. And just like I said, when we read the word Jews, we got to start looking behind these words. We got to start looking behind these words, see who they're talking about, because no doubt when Jesus was here upon the scene, when the Messiah, the Mashiach, when he was here upon the scene, he was talking to and dealing with two groups of people. 
He was dealing with those who are the original tribe of the Yehudim or Judah, and then he was dealing with the Jews. Do you understand that? Now, these Jews, it said the Jews' Passover was at hand. Watch the character, watch the nature of these Jews. Are y'all listening? Are y'all listening? If y'all listen, if y'all say y'all reading along and listen, type in the word listen. I'm going to keep y'all to the fire here tonight. I'm going to keep y'all to the fire here tonight. I hope y'all listening. All right? And, and um, his mother and brother and disciples, and they continued, I mean, they said, and, and the Jews' Passover was at hand. Check this out. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. Now, hold on. Hold on. Now, do you see the reason why I said, and the Jews' Passover was at hand? Because you're dealing with a total different type of people that has usurped authority and that is in authority when the Messiah came. And just like these people today, who's the richest people on the earth today? Who is it? The Jews. Huh? Who has done hijack the Hebrew Israelite faith and, and call it their own today? The Jews. The Jews. The Jews of the day. Oh, y'all listen to me. Huh? I know why many people can't handle this. The people who call themselves Jews. Are y'all listening? All right? Now, look, you, you're dealing with the same descendants right here. You're dealing with the same descendants right here. Anybody know John Hercanus? Anybody ever heard of John Hercanus? Boy, I tell you, we got a lot of, we got, boy, we got a lot of history we need to learn. The Jews are not who you think it are, think they are. The Jews are not Israelites, and the Israelites are not Jews. You can tell by their nature and their character. Look at this. Look at this. Verse 15. And when he had made a, small, a scourge of small cords, he drove them out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen, and he poured, look at this, out the changers' money and overthrew the tables. And then look what he said. And he said unto them that sold doves. Can you imagine being in a temple jacking folks? Selling folks, I mean, selling folks offerings, selling folk doves and sacrifices. And can you imagine this? Changing money in the temple. Uh oh. Uh oh. Check it out now. Look at this. And they sold doves. And look what Yahshua said Take these things hence. Make not my father's house and house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thy house have eaten me up. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showeth us unto us, seeth that thou doest these things? And, of course, Jesus said, Look at this. Hey, destroy this temple in three days. I am going to raise it did y'all hear that? Destroy this temple in three days, I'm going to raise it up. And, of course, they, they didn't know that he was actually talking about his, his body. They didn't know that. Huh? They didn't know that. And, and, and man, I tell you, I got some more scripture I want to look at. Look at something for a second, all right? All right? I want us to go to Matthew. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Matthew, Matthew, turn to Matthew, the 23rd chapter, and then we're going to take your phone calls. But we got to get this out of the way. we got to be bought online. I'm trying to tell y'all something. I hope that y'all have the ears to hear. We've been had. We've been bamboozled. We've been hoodwinked. We've been run amok. All that stuff that Malcolm X has said. I'm serious. Watch this now. Watch this now. Let's go to Matthew, the 23rd chapter. I want you to start at, at verse 34. Look at this. Look at this. Wherefore, behold, look what Yahshua said, I send you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, 
that upon you may come all the righteous bloodshed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, son of Bataccius, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. Now, wait a minute. What kind of priesthood was this that was slewing people and shooing people and, and killing and murdering people in the temple? Where do we read that at in our culture and heritage? Where do we read that at in our culture and heritage? And verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stoneth them which are sent unto thee, how oft would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under the wings and would not. Now notice, he's talking to Jerusalem. He's going back to the Jews again. Look what he says. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Notice he said, your house. That's the reason why the Most High don't make shrines and relics out of buildings made with hands today. That's the reason why he calls you the temple of the Holy Spirit. The prophecies of the Scripture says clearly, 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 that he would be like little sanctuary. You would be like little sanctuaries unto him. Y'all getting this? Verse 39, for I say unto you, you shall not henceforth, you shall not see me henceforth till you say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of Yah. Now you watch this. You watch this. Everybody's trying to give this false hope, trying to give this stupid false hope that these people are the so called um, Jews of the Bible. They are the Jews, but they're not the Jews of the Bible. They're not Israelites. And we got, you know, it's, a, it's amazing. You got this, this city, Jerusalem, that sits on seven hills, just like the prophecy said. And they got this pagan satanic star that has six lines, six triangles. Are you following me? And and six points to it. Making up six, six, six that these lion dogs called the star of David. It's amazing, isn't it? And we automatically make the assumption, we assume, 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 because the world, through the false religion of Christianity, has set these people up, these transplants, who have stolen our culture and our heritage, our nationality, and our land, because they're Esau. Remember the prophecies of Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 9. Esau is the end of of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. You ain't going to never hear these scriptures quoted in Messianics. You ain't going to never hear these scriptures quoted in Christianity. You ain't going to never hear none of that. You ain't going to never hear the Messianics talking against those false, fake, phony Jews. Now, they are Jews. Don't get me wrong. But they're false and fake and phony. They're liars. And you ain't going to never hear them people speak against that. And yet, still, look, these people reject our Messiah, and somehow, some way, they say, well, you got to pray for Israel. Well, you need to pray for me then. Go ahead and pray for me. Well, you need to bless Israel, then go ahead and, and dig deep in your pocket and send me all the millions of dollars rather than wasting it on, on the synagogue of Satan. No matter how many signs, no matter how much proof and no matter how amount, no amount of evidence that is mounted up against these people, yet and still, people still believe some way, somehow, that these, these um, what do you call it, rejects from the WWF in a stupid garbage what they wear, that somehow these are the people of the book, like hell they are. No, they ain't either. They are what the Bible says they are. They are blasphemers. Because they are saying that they are us, the real true Israelites, when in fact they are not. Huh? I know the blaspheme of them, the Messiah said after the death, burial, and resurrection. Of them which say that they are Jews and are not, but they are the synagogue of Satan. Now you look at these people. They circumcise babies with their teeth. The rabbis examine women's menstrual pads. Did y'all hear what I said? Did y'all hear what I said? They eat blood and drink blood. Man, I, I tell you, these satanic worshipers, they got that nasty 
satanic six-pointed so-called star of David. And they reject the Messiah who all the prophets have testified of. Where is it in our Passover instructions that we're supposed to have an egg on our plate to eat? Where does that stuff come from? Where does this sick, perverted religion come from? Well, hey, now we got the Jews in control. Um, we got that Barney Fife-looking guy that, that um, um, they've done hijacked America. Uh, what's that guy that ran for vice president with, with Al Gore? That looks like Andy Griffith. Um, that that wicked mother. Him, Rahm Emanuel. Check out these names. Feinstein, Ruth Gator Ginsburg. Man, do y'all understand what's been going on? This country has been overtaken and overran. Boy, Pastor Dow. Man, you better be careful what you saying. These people, ooh, boy. These people, these people, these Jews are something else. Well, they're going to be ashes up under my feet. I can promise you that because that's what the Messiah said. And I still today got people still deceived, trying to make excuses for this satanic synagogue of Satan as if they're some type of people. And I get people that come to me, all kind of petitions and stuff, and I know exactly who they are. I ain't blinded one bit by these bastards, not one bit. I know exactly who they are. You can't put no gag order on the Israelite who know who they are. Show me one captivity that they've ever been in. I mean, they clearly tell you that they ain't never been in no captivity. I'm serious. It, 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 get your Bible again. Go to John, the 8th chapter, verse 31. John eight thirty one. We're going to hit this. We're going to hit this for a second. John 8, verse 31. Y'all ready? Are y'all ready? John 8, verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him. Notice, because they put the word Jews is really Yahudins. Because remember, he came to the tribe of Judah. All right? But he said to those which believe on him. You remember when they left out of the land of Egypt, all the Israelites didn't believe in Moses. Remember Cor, Dathan, and Abiram? We got the same problem today. He said, here's the key. Here's the kicker how you know the people that are real true Israelites. If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. You don't believe how many pastors and, 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 um, are breaking the Sabbath. Pastors now. Breaking the Sabbath, telling folks that they got to work on the Sabbath. Got their family breaking the Sabbath. Huh? The Holy Sabbath, the Holy Seventh Day. And they call themselves pastors. Now, notice that there are two types of pastors. There's Christian pastors, and then there's Israelite pastors. Did y'all hear what I said? Did y'all hear what I said? And there's a difference. And these pastors that, that are working on the Sabbath, you are liars. You of your father the devil. And look what it says right here. You continue on my word, you are my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall do what? Make you free. And then here it is, the kicker, verse 33. They answered him, look what they said. We be Abraham's seed, and we never in bondage to any man. And how sayest thou, you shall be made free? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Remember, the prophecy is Abraham that your seed was going to be as the sand of the sea. And they're not lying. That they, because remember, the Bible even teaches that, you know, thou shalt not abhor an Edomite because he is thy brother. What do you mean brother? Half brother. Yeah, they are children of the flesh, children of the devil, and not children of the promise. That's the problem that we keep messing up right there that people just don't get. These people are children of the flesh, not children of the promise. We are the children of the promise. Them people are children of the flesh, children of the devil. Huh? That's why Jesus told you of your father, the devil. Now check this out. You know just as well as I do that our family 
ever since we left out of the land of Mizraim. We have been in one captivity and one bondage after another, after another, after another, after another. Who in the world are these people who say that they're Abraham's seed and they have never been in the bondage? i tell you who they are, the Canaanite Edomites. That's who they are, the Canaanite Edomites, who came from the seed of Ishmael, who came from the seed of Esau, who came from the seed of Judah when he went and married them Canaanites. And then the people who came from the seed of, did y'all know that Solomon married Edomite women? Did y'all know that? Contrary to what the scripture said. So you got the Hebrew seed spread all over the place, all over the place. And these people thinking that the birthright belonged to them. And so, hey, they'll take our laws twisted, warped, and perverted, but they got the Babylonian Talmud. That is their law. That's their book. That is their Bible. The Babylonian Talmud is their constitution. But ours is the scripture that comes from Moshe. And they said, and they answered him, we be Abraham's seed. We never in bondage any man house say thou to make free. Now, wait a minute. Israel has been in captivity after captivity after captivity. We've been in the, the captivity of Mizraim, which you call Egypt. We've been in the Babylonian captivity. We've been in the Assyrian captivity. We've been in the Medes and the Persian captivity. We've been in the Greek captivity. We've been in the Roman captivity. It's called a Greco-Roman captivity. And we've been in the European captivity. We've been in the Arab captivity. We've been in the captivity of the Jews and even the Hispanics captivity. They even sold us into captivity and slavery. And then we end up over here in America. The, Judah did. Judah did. End up over here in America. We're still in captivity. We're in exile right now. Oh, boy. Man, I tell you, these people are liars. Jesus went on down to verse 39 in John 8 and said, Then answered, they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If Abraham, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that have told you the truth, which I have heard of Yah, and this did not Abraham. Whoo, boy, it's getting heated, isn't it? Well, anyway, I think I done pretty much beat that horse right there and told the truth on that one. Saints, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of the world, wake up. The Most High has given you the Holy Spirit for the purpose of waking up for you to have eyes to see and the ears to hear. We're at the end of this thing. Don't look for another 100 years. We're at the end of this thing. It's time now. And I told the people here years ago, it's time. It's time. It's time. It's time for us to get our hearts right. It's time for us to seek the Most High Yah. It's time for us to be holy. Our name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life because without it, which, holiness, no man shall see Yahshua Hamashiach. Hamashiach. Nobody's going to see Yahshua Hamashiach. That's the truth. That is the truth, and that's the true straight way. I hope that you have ears to hear. Hallelujah. With that, we're going to go to the phone lines. We're going to go to Junior. Caller number 347 in New York, Junior. Shabbat Shalom, Junior. How you doing, brother? Shalom, Pastor. Shalom, Saints. Yeah, it's crazy, yo. Shooting today. Now I try to bring guns now. See that, right? And children. Trust these children, children, children. All these children got killed and we got bang guns and all that. All that crap. Come on. Come on. Yeah, these the same people, Junior, that, that turned around and, and um, I got a video, man, that, that just makes you bring tears to your eyes. I got a video of people actually leaping out of those twin towers when those planes hit it. We know that the Israelis did that under yeah. the guise of the American government. We know they did that, brother. And, of course, of course they used that as a false flag to go and do what? To, to go out and conquer other nations um, and had nothing to do. Um, with, with the bomb or the, those planes going into the World Trade Center. And, of course, everything is always 
the children. Always the children. These lying devils stage playing up. They go kill the children. Pass laws to put us in more bonds. I tell you, we in a mess, dude. Yeah. See, I see. I saw. I'm. I'm. I'm so not them too. People jump on and on all that. Oh my God! I want to see that. I want. I want to talk about that. Oh man! And I'm children. Oh my God! Oh my God! The devil know they. The devil know he's doing. The devil know he's doing. He know. It's not the gun. He used the gun. Gun did not use it. I'm making sense, right, Pastor? Yeah. I tell you, brother. I tell you that. That's the reason why I tell. The, the, the saints are the most, especially you Israelites. You have to understand, my concern is only Israel. I am only concerned about Israel. That's it. I'm concerned only about Israel only. And I want y'all to get y'all children out of those public schools. That's what I want y'all to do. I want y'all, if you're an Israelite, I want your children out of those public schools. I want you out. You never know when a psychopath's going to go in there. And you know what? You know what? It may happen to you one day because you refuse to hear this pastor. That could full well have been one of the schools that your children are in, and they could have got shot up and, and got all killed up and dead. Of course, now me, I'm going to look at the parents like you're stupid as hell. What's wrong with you? Why can't you do what the Bible say and train up your children in the way that they should go so when they get old they won't depart from the faith? What's so difficult and hard about it? What's the problem? I mean, this stuff irks me, man. It gets me going, Junior. It really, truly does. I know. We I'm are so far though. removed. We are so far removed from our culture, our heritage, our nationality. We have got to the point where we even despise those who even tell us the truth. I could understand that if I was a hypocrite, but you ain't going to get pastors telling you to get your children out of school unless the pastor has <laughs> led by example. That's the reason why that I can stand up here and tell you all you people, like, get your children out of those schools before they we turn around and we hear about them getting gunned down by some psychopath. Yeah, my kids. Or getting molested by some homosexual teacher. Yeah, yeah, my kid, my kid be homeschooled. I don't care. Damn, my kid be homeschooled. Here, because the Bible says so. I'm going to be out of this state, too. New York State, too. Full crap in this hand, too, and all that. Be one of my brothers, you know, in general. I can't trust nobody around here. Man, you may be sending your child to to a school where the, where the woman is a closet witch. Yep. Casting spells and carrying on and stuff on it. And, of course, nowadays you know that, hey, you got TSA molesting everybody. You know, telling what the – you got pedophiles setting up off in these school systems, brother. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you something, too. And today, and and today, decide right now, children, children – she's having sex with children, 16-year-old boys with – where man teachers and female teachers have sex with boys and girls and all that. Sick. It's sick. Especially in New York City. Boy education today. It's sick, man. It's sick. It's sick. You know, it's sad, brother, because you think about it. You, you, you're seeing your children in public school, and next thing you know, hey, I don't recommend, I don't even recommend Israelites to go to college. See, that's part of the thing of being in bondage. You sit up here with being in bondage, and then your children, stupid as they are, they're going to go ahead and take the Roman way. And, you know, you can't really do nothing about it when you're in bondage once they hit 18 because they're going to do whatever they want to do, and the system is going to back them up. And it's pretty bad because they say at 18 they grown. So you can tell we ain't in our land because our laws ain't, ain't applied. Exactly. Exactly. You know I mean? exactly. Yes, if, 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 if I had it my way, there ain't no woman that would leave her house in, until she got married to a husband. That's right. Then that again, um, Sister um, um Send that again, um, Sister Sierra. You sent me a message. Send it again. I, I missed it. But you see, we, we won't. We will not do the law of the Most High. We despise it, Junior. And as a result, we end up suffering for it. Yeah, the problem. Sorry. Oh, the problem is we comfortable. That's the problem. We comfortable. We used to got used to it. That's why. No, I'm not comfortable no more. I want to try to come out of it. Me, personally, I want to come out of it. It's hard. It's hard. I got to go through, especially me. Especially me. It's important. You know, y'all well, right now. Well, you know, Junior, people, they, you know, I, I, I am quickly becoming one of the most hated pastors on YouTube. Um, I only got a few people that are very fond. I, I'm, I'm becoming real hated, hated real fast, not because I've done anything to anybody. I'm becoming hated because I'm telling them the truth that they don't want to hear. It's called an inconvenient truth. Yes, That's what it's called an inconvenient truth. But you know what? 
as these years go by, we're going to watch a lot of people sit and suffer because they refuse to do what I told them to. Hey, I know one thing. This day, they're going to know that a man of Yah. This day, they're going to know that a man of Yah. Where, where did they do this at, Sierra? Tell me, the, where did they do this at? Tell me where they sent it at. This day, they're going to know that a man of Yah has been a, among them. Now, and guess what? Sierra sends me a thing that says, look at this. A man stabbed 22 children in China. In China. They don't ban knives. 22 knives. children in China. You people, there's a spirit that is going out all across this land that ain't holy. It's the demonic devil spirit. Yep. A man, 36 years old, decided he's going to go in and just start stabbing children in China. Sick. I tell you what, y'all go ahead and leave your children in those public schools if you want to. If they die, they des- yay, they deserve exactly what they get because of the ignorance of their stupid parents. You've been warned, you've been told. You know what? All of, everybody out there, you gonna know that a man of God has been in your midst and been in your presence. You gonna know a real true man of God is here on this earth today. I'm just one of them. And that's just the truth. Yeah, I saw. That's I saw the truth in, straight way. Yeah, I saw. I saw in um, Journey Report talk about the, that the guy stabbed thirty people with knives in China. They got banned knives now. Come on, it's him. He used a knife. Knife didn't use him. Come on, come on, come on now. And I was Obama, right? I'll, I'll end it right now. I'll list the ban of nineteen ninety school ban gun gun free zone. Say a Brady, no Brady Commission, right? The Brady Commission that banned guns, like don't like guns, so-called gun violence, right? I'll list that ban. The child and the teacher had guns at all times. I'm telling you, back in the days, children would carry guns and teachers too. Mm, mm, mm. That ban, man, 1990s. And keep nothing. Hey, to what? Say. I hope that all y'all Israelites are, are taking heed and, and obeying what your pastor's telling you. I really, truly do. Um, but, but don't look for no sympathy from me. I feel sorry for the children. Don't look for no sympathy from Pastor Dow at all. I'm going to behave just like the apostles and prophets, especially the prophets. Don't look for no sympathy from me at all when you send your children to these schools and then one day they end up getting jacked up and getting killed and murdered and molested and, 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 and um, are left for dead because of the decisions and choices that you made. I'm telling you, I'm really peed off at the attitude of Israelites today. I really, truly am. Where's the holiness at? Where's the obedience at today? Where? Where is it? Haven't we learned from history that a stubborn and stiff neck and a stout heart and rebellious people will always perish? It ain't hard to obey, y'all. It ain't hard to obey the commandment. It ain't hard to keep Torah. All right, brother Junior. You got anything um, else, brother? Yeah, I got one more thing. And the, you got um, me stirred up, Junior. It's true. It's the truth, man. I had to talk about that. I hate it. Killing children in my country. I hate that. I'll kill. I see someone try to kill children. I'll kill the person and kill children. I hate that. I hate it. I hate it. I hate that. I got one more thing too. The study you did on Tuesday and talking about the real Israel lights who get putting a new turban on right now. Like when you going, when you go out and going to kingdom, right? Right. You say take that for you. Garment, oh, put in turban, put a new garment in the kingdom. Boom. That's all I want to hear from from the king. I want to hear why he doesn't do that. That's in, I'm right, right? I'm correct, right? You correct, Junior. Dumb, dumb bastards today, dumb fake Israelites, man. They they not going to his kingdom. They ain't. They ain't sinning either. Well, they, no, brother. They don't, they don't have the spirit of truth, and they don't have the spirit of Messiah on them, brother. That, 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 that ain't the spirit of Messiah that these people are ministering in. I know. I know. That's and, another spirit. That's right. That's right. And um, and um, you talking about um, one more thing um, like um, like like you don't feel sorry. Like you don't understand, right? Like you tell you understand. He understand us, right? So he don't he don't feel sorry. You don't feel bad. He don't feel sorry for you when you feel bad. You gotta repent. And that's it. No guilt, shame, combination. If I'm correct, right? Hey, I tell you what. If if um, Israelites refuse to obey what these men of y'all are telling them today. And then their children end up going in these places. They getting murdered. Um, call, hey, call on the Most High 
and ask him why come uh, your child didn't get spared. And I guarantee you're going to hear in your spirit because you're rebellious, because you're stubborn, you didn't want to listen, you stiff neck. That's right. That's right. Yeah, Amen. That's good. Amen on that. Hallelujah on that one. Amen, good brother. Study. Good study on that. That's good study you did on Tuesday. I like it. I understand it. I understand and I'm telling you, Junior, you know what? I, I'm going to tell you one more thing I always notice too, Junior. I always notice that whenever I start talking about spiritual warfare and I'm starting going deep into the soul of man, I always notice, man, we lose a lot of people. I know. We always lose a lot of people, brother, when we talk about spiritual warfare. By the fruits, you should know them. The fruit. Fruit. They man, come in. We, no, bro. What? Wait, what say? Sorry. I got people, man. Man, I got people, man, that won't even return my phone calls today, bro. I mean, supposed to be faithful Israelite brothers and sisters. Can you believe that? Mm, mm, mm. New broom, sweet spot. New broom. New broom don't last, man. And one thing I want to say, too, can you um, send me that DVD he did in Atlanta about them fake Jews, right? Can you send me that? Let me um, see if Brother Shane, uh, um, um, send Brother Shane a private message, Junior. Let me write this down. Uh, a DVD. Now, I probably you probably be you know I did a better teaching here on home base here at Straightway, brother. DVD. Uh, you, you call it Canaanite. Canaanite uh, Yehudas. Canaanite my, Yehudas. I told him you, one you went to Atlanta with with Jer, I mean Jermaine did. Well, I understand that, but what I'm saying is I preached the same message in the tabernacle that next following Sabbath, but I went in greater detail and in depth. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's what I'm saying. You got a better copy of that one. Okay, all right. I got you. I got you. No problem. All right, Junior. Hey, brother, it's good hearing from you. Nice talking to you. I love you. Love you too, Junior. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. You too. Hallelujah. Let's go to Brother Jesus. Brother Jesus, 910. Hey, Brother Jesus, don't get offended, man, because your pastor is hot, man. But, uh, man, I'm on fire, brother. <laughs> Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Da. How are you doing tonight? Shabbat Shalom to all saints listening. Man, I'm on fire, brother Aces. I'm, I'm highly upset at Israelites, brother. I'm highly upset because of all the disobedience. Yes, <clears throat> and uh, you should be, Pastor Da. I mean, um, even I m- myself, like I tell you, Pastor Da, I myself, uh, I kind of try to chasten myself every day because uh, cause I, I find myself. Little by little, uh, kind of like partaking in the, rather than being set apart, like at work, for example. You know, I try to be as set apart as I can at, um, at work, you know, but sometimes I f- find myself in the conversations that I shouldn't be in. Uh, for example, when I hear, you know, people talking, making inappropriate jokes, and I find myself, like, kind of laughing, and in my head, I'm like, why did I just laugh at this? at their sinful nature just now, and just, like, I feel bad about it. But believe me, Pastor Dow, there's, there's a lot more that that we all need to do, and you're, you're right, Pastor Dow. i tell you, brother, I'm telling you, man, I, I, you know, a lot of this foolishness that we're dealing with nowadays, we, you know, we got to keep, it, it's going to take everything we can just to keep ourselves sanctified holy. It really, truly, truly is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Pastor Dow. And you know, by and it, it is time to, for all, for all of us to start waking up for sure, Pastor. It is all it very. It is time to start waking up, and then, that's including me. I need to start waking up myself. Um, I find myself just uh, sometimes, like I say, you know, doing things that I shouldn't be doing. Um, I don't have too much for you today, Pastor. Um, I did, you know, I, I did come across the Babylonian Talmud a, a few weeks ago, like, just wasn't even looking for it, but somebody posted it on Facebook about how, uh, the you know, it promotes racism, pedophilia, uh, so, um, among other things. And somebody, and when I when I checked it out, somebody even posted a video of one of the rabbis, you know, circumcising a child with their teeth. And I, I didn't watch it, but I was like, man, that's what was, well, that's what Pastor Dow was talking about. Yeah, um, And, uh, yeah, I mean, these people, I think even in Babylonian time, like you already know, but for those things we didn't know, they even say that, you know, being black is a, is a curse. And yep. it's just it's crazy what these people believe, especially in that book. You can tell they don't read the Bible. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, you you definitely got to go outside of the Bible to make statements like that because the Bible definitely don't preach and teach that. As a matter of fact, it, it, it says it the other way around. And, you know, it's just, uh, I forget what other religion out there promotes that being black is a curse. I think it might be Mormonism. I forget. Yeah, Mormons. The Mormons do it. The uh, Christian religion does it. You go in a Christian bookstore, man, you'll find all kind of books. Call, talk about the curse of Ham. Yeah, and, and, you know, it even came out, like, I saw an article last week that the, a Jewish teacher was caught, you know, uh, Molesting his his uh, his students. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. Well, they ain't gonna do nothing about it. Hey, you know what, brother Jesus? I'm gonna tell everybody here something that I've often told the saints here at Straightway. I'm gonna tell everybody here on the, in in the on the broadcast tonight the same thing. Are you ready to hear this? Yes, sir. Brother, the Catholics are also closet crypto Jews themselves. The Pope, the, them, them cardinals, them bishops, them friars, look, look at the headdress. Look and see if they don't resemble the same thing that the Jews do. I really never really paid attention to it, but I know what you're saying with the with those uh, round hats in their head. I, I, I get that. There you go, brother. Remember, by their fruits, you shall know them. People can say whatever they want all day long, but just watch them. Just watch them. And uh, the same thing with the, yeah with the Catholics. Uh, I was reading something the other day, and where you know that the the Catholic the the, the something in their in the doctrines that you know the, the Pope is God on earth, and uh, yep. yep what else uh, that he has the authority to change God's laws uh, and things like that. It's just uh, it's crazy. It's it's absolutely Bro. crazy. And you know, fastened out. I, I was looking into it, and uh, they even admit it that uh, the Christians, if they, that they, that the Christians that so supposedly follow the Bible, they even wrote a letter to these people back in I don't know the 1800s, telling them why do you say you follow Christ, but yet you don't follow the Bible? They wrote some big letter to them and just uh, like really threw it down on them. Yeah, yeah, it, it's just the truth, brother. You know, we are. We are in some bad, 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 bad times. We really truly are. But we're in some joyous times, too, because we're at the end of this thing. We are at the end of this thing, brother. And, um, hey, you know, it, it's amazing, brother, how that people are so deceived today. But a Jew cannot be an Israelite, and an Israelite is not a Jew. Am I making any sense? Yes, sir. There are two different, two different total type of people. Um, the Bible speaks about Hebrews and Israelites. It don't speak nothing about no Jews just because they put pen and paper in there and they pop up on the scene. I thought I went over that history pretty good to bring us online where it all originated from. But, brother, we're dealing with professional devils today um, that, that, that don't care nothing about the souls of people whatsoever at all. I mean, nothing. And that's the reason why, brother, they ain't going to do nothing to that Jew guy that ever did that, man. They ain't going to do nothing against him. Nothing no, no, whatsoever no, no. at all. And uh, you're, you're definitely, you know, I really, it is interesting how much uh, you're able to, to uh, I'm trying to say, um, like when you, you preach one of your messages that, you know, Christianity is in the Bible. It's in the Book of Revelations, where you know the 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 where it's talking about a mother and its harlots. Yes, you sir. Know, I remember looking into uh, some uh, what do you call it uh, Bible prophecy videos, and it talks about how there's a plaque in, by in the Roman Catholic Church that says it's the mother. Wow. You know? um, it's in I think it's in Latin where it says it's the mother. The church or something like that. Yep, yep, you're right about that. Elder Doug will verify that, brother. You're right. And, uh, you know, we had an old man here who was studying to be a priest. His name was Brother Roger Shanahan. He's gone on to be with the Most High now. Uh, he's buried uh, up here on the land, brother. But um, that brother, man, he could run down everything you ever wanted to know about Catholics. He could have told you. It's. Yeah, they're, they're definitely, the Roman Catholic Church is definitely in the Bible, Pastor Dell. It's, it's not, not in a positive light at all. 
I tell you what, that old man, if we could go back in the archive, we probably got some videos of it too. You ought to hear that old man, how he would testify against that Roman Catholic Church. I mean, he, that old man hated that church with a very passionate hatred. And, it, and, and you know what, Brother Jesus, Brother Roger was a very gentle man, but that man had a passionate hatred for the Roman Catholic Church, bro. I mean a hatred for it. That's good, and it, it's uh, the kind of right kind of uh, the right kind of anger to have. You yeah, know. you're right, brother. Well, it's good talking with you. All right, Pastor Dow, uh, you have a good uh, you have a good uh, good day, Pastor Dow. Shabbat shalom to everybody. Shabbat shalom, my brother. Be at peace, man. Brother Roger had a passionate hatred for that the Roman Catholic. I mean, he despised that thing. And, and I think he should know, especially if you were studying to be a priest. I think he should know. Man, I think he said he was in that mess 38 or 39 years. Oh, jeez. Going to Virginia. Calling number 540. This is Pastor Dow. You're on the Straightway Truth Radio broadcast. How can I help you? Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. This is Freeman. Uh, I just want to call in. I don't have... Uh, that much to say. I just wanted to know, uh, let you know that I was thinking about you, and I'm, I'm listening in, and I uh, just wanted to tell everybody, uh, you know, that I love them, man. Just stay in the Word. Stay in the Word. Uh, in this world, Pastor, it's, it's crazy. Uh, especially, it's just getting crazy and crazier, Pastor. That's all I know. And I, I tell you, brother, you know, I get passionate about stuff like this because, you know, I my heart does go out to children. It really, truly does, man. It really, really, truly does uh, because they're defenseless. They're innocent, man. They they, they can't, they, you know, they're, they're in this world, man. They don't even get a stand a chance. we got all these folks um, looking to um, perpetuate some type of injustices on them. It's just a sad, sad thing. But I tell you, brother, I, I really have a, an indignation and a fire. Uh, uh, I mean, a fire that has been lit inside my heart that is brewing on the inside of me, brother, that is quickly growing, brother. And I'm telling you what that fire is. Uh, I am starting to get to the point, man, when I'm starting to have um, an actual despite for Israelites that refuse to do the truth, brother. I'm uh, telling you, I I think this long-suffering stuff is just about over because, you know, as a pastor, I'm 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 a man that is after the Most High's own heart. Right, and and a lot of people don't understand what it means to be a shepherd. But I can tell you one thing: I feel what the Father feels. I feel what yes, He feels, sir. and I convey what how He feels at any given time, especially when I'm ministering. And I'm telling you right now, brother. I'm gonna tell you everybody, brother. He he is highly upset with these stage playing hypocritical Israelites, and and a lot of people are gonna. Be surprised, brother, when they lift their eyes up in a burning hell for playing games with the Most High and refuse to keep his commandments. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, yes, brother, sir. as a pastor, I feel what he feels. And I'm telling you, there's a fire that is brewing deep down in my soul, brother, that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger as the months go by. Ain't too much more foolishness. I'm going to be putting up with it with a lot of people. I promise you that. Hey, I agree with you, Pastor. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I, I've seen what you're talking about, and it disgusts me. I'm like, wow, just look at them. You know, you can tell that it's not, it's not the spirit of, of, our, of our God, you know. So uh, I, I just want you guys, man, out there, Israelite, the Israelite family, the ones that are seeking after, after the Messiah's heart, just, man, you know he's real. Just keep doing what you're doing. And uh, pray for each other, and also just keep encouraging each other. I just, uh, I just want to tell you, I, I love you, Pastor. I'm gonna get to, uh, uh, you'll get to know me. You'll get to know me more and more. I'm gonna keep calling in and, uh, and keep just praying, man. Trying to, trying to encourage myself also because it gets hard out here sometimes, and uh, I, I'm not. I'm just trying to get better every day, every day. And I know we don't have much time, so I'm on the ball. I'm trying to stay on fire, stand in that book. And I just want you, want you to say a prayer for me. Uh, just pray for me. And all the saints just listening, man, pray for me. And, and hopefully that could, uh, and I know i got to do the prayer myself and, 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 and condition myself, but I, I'm just trying to get where I need to be. And that's the only that's the only thing I want to do. I'm not, I'm not worried about 
I'm not scared of what's going on in the world. Actually, I'm glad we are at this time, like you said, because um, uh, I'm tired of seeing this mess, you know. You know, I, the, the mercy of the Most High is, is <clears throat> as long as people are going in the right direction, as long as they continue to make improvement. But, brother, I'm talking about he, he's about fed up and frustrated with these Israelites, brother, who you can't see nothing in, no love of Yah, no love of the brethren. I mean, no keeping the commandments, just making excuse for sin. And I mean, the most I, I'm jealous for him. I am literally jealous for him. Oh my God, dude, he gonna really set fire on them for real. He really is because uh, how they act, they just acting the fool, acting the fool. I listen to you, uh, listen to your message about them wearing the turbans on the head and all that too. I was wondering about that. Why are they running around wearing this on the head and walking around and, and talking? Still got all this swag and slang and just and just uh, just talking just talking trash to people and, and cussing them out and yelling at people, you know, and just acting crazy. But they what they're doing is they're, they're running, they're running, they're running the flock away. That's what they're trying to do. See, that that's what they're trying to do. So, well, brother, uh, they they are what brother Junior say they are. They're fake Israelites. And yeah. I, if you notice, man, I don't give them a lot of attention. I don't. Um, no. Uh, I have to speak about them every once in a while because um, some of the real true Israelites, I got to run blocks so that they don't get deceived by all these fake people who are posing as Israelites and they're not. I appreciate you on that. Yeah, they're, they're out of oh, order, bro. man. They're out of order. Go ahead, brother. Yes, sir. I appreciate you on that because uh, we really uh, we really need that because they're out there all over all over the internet and. Uh, I don't have any Israelite brothers around here. Uh, Brother Jesus called me uh, uh, earlier this week. He's supposed to come down and see me. He's supposed to get together. And uh, but uh, I don't have any Israelite brothers here, so you know uh, I just try to stay in touch with the uh, with the family. Uh, you know, uh, there in Straightway and, and uh, Brother uh, Jermaine and uh, you know Austin, of course, and uh, and uh, Vernon. Uh, talk to uh, text Brother Rufus every now and then. Uh, but I'm just trying to stay in the way because I don't really have much much people here. I mean, you know how it is once you start getting the truth and then you, you try to tell people a little bit of the truth and it's like they, it runs them away from you. They act like you're a coop, you know, oh, yeah. like you say. They act like you're crazy. And, but in all reality, man, we just happy. <laughs> we just happy. And at the same yeah. time, man, it's, it's – uh, it's happy to know the truth, but at the same time, you you want to tell the truth, man. And when you do put the truth out there, yes, it 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 it, uh, it shows you their spirit. It shows you their spirit. I'm not trying to hold you up, Pastor. I just wanted to say I love you, man, and y'all pray for me, Pastor. All right, brother Freeman, you be encouraged, brother. Okay, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Yeah, brother and sisters, we got a lot of people out there that are imposters. You remember Satan himself proposes as an angel. Of light, and you can't get Israelites unless you have um, eighty, ninety percent truth, and then ten percent lies. And see, it's that lie that's the hook in the jaw. It's the lie that gets folk. Let's go to Brother Ron, Brother Ron, New Jersey. Come on, Brother Ron, you in four, two, three? Come on, what you got, Brother Ron? Hey, Shalom. Hello. Hello. Pastor. Hey, yeah. Oh, okay, because you said Moran in New Jersey, so I well, who wasn't is sure. Bro Ron in Chattanooga. <laughs> oh, bro Ron in Chattanooga. Okay, I'm sorry. How you doing, bro Ron? I am wonderful. Blessed. Doing well. How are you? We doing well. Hey, we, we made up a new song, man. Y'all gonna hear it tomorrow, bro Ron. Okay, cool, cool. You you know I'm down. Just um, I will definitely be listening and watching. Um, Pastor, didn't want to take up too much of your time, my man. I uh, just wanted to uh, thank you for um, for having us to do the Saints once again out to um, Straightway, man. Um, no matter how many times we we come, we're, we're treated like royalty. And uh, it's always appreciated. I uh, never want to take take uh, the visits too straightway for granted. Um, and I, I think I speak for all of us 
when I say that uh, you are one personable, one approachable, one lovable pastor. And um, to say that I'm grateful for you, to say that we are grateful for you would be an understatement. Um, it's, it's just been incredible. Um, since then, man, just, just hitting the work week, um, just hitting it hard, man. Um, um, from what I've heard, they, uh, not only have the Saints been working physically, but uh, a lot has taken place within the um, Georgia community this week, man. And I just, you know, just uh, from the outside looking in, I just, I'm just thankful to be surrounded by uh, such men and women of Yah, man. Um, I know you hear me blabber about Bro Rufus all the time, but the man's a champion. The man's a warrior, and I, um, um, I seriously thank Yah for him every day. Uh, not only him, but uh, for, for all of you, um, uh, you, all, you know, everybody, everybody, everyone. Um, as far as me, man, uh, just just working physically, uh, a little under sixty hours this week. Um, and, um, you know, I um, like I've told Brother Rufus before, I do it for us, man, and I I, um, I just thank the Most High for um, for continuing to to take me from a I mentality to a we mentality. You know, from an individual lifestyle to a tribal way of life, and, and it's nothing and no one but him that's doing this, and I just want to thank you for the encouragement, thank you for the word, thank you uh, for opening your arms, your home, and everything of yours to me. Um, I, I also want to thank um, uh, Mom Gaston for uh, the continuous love and support that she shows me on an, in, uh, um, yeah, on an individual basis. She is a true mother of Yah indeed. And, um, you know, you, you take care of my mama, both her and um, um, Sister Carol. Um, I, I'm appreciative for everybody, man. And, uh, again, I just wanted to thank you, man. Don't want to take up too much of your time. Uh, doing a lot of research, especially on Leviathan. Uh, started in Job 41, and now I'm in the book of Maccabees and the Apocrypha. And, you know, just, you know, just dealing with things step by step, man, getting in order, like what we talked about, you know, when when I was there or whatever. So, yeah. All right, bro. Uh, Ron, it's good to hear from you. You be encouraged, okay, brother? Likewise, my brother. Thank you so much, man. You 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 are just an incredible pastor. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the kind words, brother Ron. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Hey, y'all know uh, Brother Mitchell uh, from Houston, Texas. Uh, Brother Mitchell, he's um, in that Oregon. He's up in Washington State visiting with Brother Frank, that faithful Israelite, and his family. Brother Mitchell is. Um, so Brother Mitchell and Brother Greg, man, them brothers are getting around. They are literally getting around, making visits and visiting people. And, man, I tell you, it's just a blessing. Hallelujah. Good, good, strong Israelites. Where we at? On Ontario, Canada. Ontario, Canada. Caller number six four seven. This is Pastor Dow. You on the Straight Truth? How may I help you? Hello. Shalom. Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. How you doing? I am blessed of the Most High Yah. How may I help you? I I just had a few questions because you know. I know that we are supposed to keep the feast of the Most High Yah, but I was wondering how are we supposed to, um, uh, how may I say this, how are we supposed to do them now that we know that all the all they were doing was just pointing to the Messiah? So how do we perform the ordinances? That's oh, I'm you asking. know, brother, I can help you out real quick on that. If you would go to... Um, I think it's um, uh, Brother Jermaine's YouTube page. Are you familiar with Brother Jermaine or Sister yes, C.T. YouTube page? All right. Now, every year, every single year, about a couple of weeks before the major feast days, I do an in-depth teaching of the feast days and why we teach them and why we do them. If you go okay. back into those archives, you can look at those videos and brother, yeah. you can get probably about the the, the, the most in depth teaching that you can. And you have a very good understanding 
uh, why we keep them and how we keep those feast days. Okay, because the how, I understand the why. It's just yep. the how that I always yep. had a problem with. Yep, because you'll you'll see it, and uh, and a lot of those feast days, brother, you'll go back in the archives, you'll see us uh, actually doing them ourselves in service because we broadcast our services live. Right. Right. And I had All right. One more, and I had one more question. What you got? My my question. Let me see if I I gotta I gotta make sure I remember this one right quick. My other question was definitely, okay, so we all know that divorce is is only pending on adultery, and that's due to the hardness of, of, of a man's heart, correct? Yeah, that's one of, one of the facets, but there are a couple of more. Go ahead. Um, because I've, I've seen this time and time again, and I, I don't agree with it personally, but do you feel that abuse, or do you believe, according to the to the Holy Scriptures, that abuse is a um, physical abuse, domestic abuse is 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 a uh, is grounds for divorce? And I believe it is grounds for separation. Yes, sir. But remarriage. Well, you see, there's a lot of doctrines out there, but if you go okay. into the Torah and you read the accounts in the Torah, like Deuteronomy 21. Uh, Leviticus 4, you read about all these accounts and stuff, and then you go watch and see, and the Torah has all those answers in there. There are many, many different grounds that people can separate on. Many people can get divorces on, but, you know, there's a lot of things that are, are taught today by different religions coming from different perspectives, and then they make right. a, what you call a pet peeve and a doctrine. Here at Straightway, um, because we've come out of the world and come out of the system of the world and doing things, brother, I can tell you this, that, that um, when, when we've married somebody here, brother, we, we have a, a 100% success rate. I haven't known of anybody to get a divorce. Oh, okay. Left, sir. Thank you so much. All right. Now, that's all predicated upon people keeping the commandments, because remember, all manner of sin and blaspheme shall be forgiven among men with exception of one. And that's the blaspheming yeah. of the Holy Ghost. So the question is, can adultery be forgiven, yes or no? Yes and no, right. And, yeah, that's if you see the commandments. And definitely if um, prior to you accepting the Messiah, um, let's say all this went down, I guess it can't be held against you because you did as heathens did because you were a heathen. Exactly. And, you know, um, because we, we, we didn't have no laws. There had no statutes, there had no commandments to go by. But, no, see, all that foolishness and all that stuff stops when you come to the knowledge of the truth. No, we, we don't. Exactly. And anybody want to go ahead and go that route and act that way, they can, but they can't be a part of the Israelite heritage of straightway with that kind of foolishness. And I, and I, don't, and I don't blame you for putting down the hammer on that. You better no, believe. brother, because you do that one thing, next thing you know, you'd be like an old apostolic church. I come out of when you got a sister, once one minute she married to the elder, next minute she divorced and married to the deacon, next minute she divorced yep. again and, and married to a brother, and then you got all these children <laughs> calling everybody daddy, stepdaddy, and I mean, it's just utter uh -huh. confusion. Uh-huh, because I'm coming from that. I'm coming from the from the Sabbath-keeping um, apostolic church, and, and before that, um, I, I I bounce around a few churches, but I, my foundation was Seven Day Adventist, and we both know how that goes. Oh boy, <laughs> I'm glad that the Most High Yah pulled you out of that, brother. Yes, sir. Oh, one last question. I promise you. So, what do you suppose is going to happen to those who fall under the religion of Christianity that um, observe the Shabbat and? Uh, Keep, well, not so much keep the feast, but they observe the Shabbat and they preach and teach righteousness. I think that that judgment is left up to the Most High. Pastor Dow does not have a heaven or hell to put nobody in, but the people who listen to me, uh, they know for sure what the Torah and what the commandments and the law say. Um, now, the judgment far as eternal damnation and all that other stuff, I leave that up to the Father. I'm just trying to make sure that the people on my watch are not confused about what we need to be doing. Right. And now, it's, it's according a, to the Messiah, if you want to inherit eternal life, you keep the commandments. 
Right. According to um according to Revelation twenty two fourteen and, and many other scriptures and yes, uh, Isaiah sixty six um uh sixteen through the through the twenty seven and all those scriptures. Yep. Yep. That's right. Keep the commandments Thanks. and live. Let That's us hear it. the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yah, keep the commandments as the whole duty, duty of man. man. That's right. Thank you so much for your time. I pray that the blessings of the Most High Yah continue to fall upon you and uh, your your local ministry and for even my fellow brothers and sisters that are at large. I receive that blessing. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Very good phone call there. Let's go to Sister Demarius in New York, and then we'll go to Sister Rainey uh, here in Tennessee. All right, Sister Demarius in New York, 917. How are you doing, Sister? Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom, Saints. Shabbat Shalom. How are you doing, Israel? How are you, Pastor? I'm blessed of the Most High Yah, highly favored, and doing well. That's very good to hear. Um, I am also just as fired up as you are about the situation that happened in Connecticut, and um, I think that it's just it's really sad, and just the entire situation, I think, was fueled by this country. But, I mean, we all, we all know the truth behind that. But um, I, I wanted to let you know that two things. I received the CD... Um, Sister Rainey CD, and I thank you for that, for sending it. Um, And the next thing is, earlier this week, my younger sister is in public school, um, and earlier this week she got a letter from her school saying that if she didn't get uh, certain shots, she wouldn't be able to come back to school. Um, And today... Yeah, but, of course, my um, my parents allowed her today to get the shot. And I know that one of the shots, one of the shots was the HPV vaccine. Oh. And she's 11 years old. So I don't, you know, I don't understand why they would allow her to be vaccinated, but they're not, they're not on the same mindset as us Israelites, Israelites are. That, that's so the I reason why. Okay. That's the reason why they would vaccine them, because, because their mind and their conscience is defiled. And did I also let you know that they're going to be putting a Christmas tree in here soon? Well, hey, if it's their home, they can do whatever they want. That's what pagans do. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's what pagans do, bro. That's, that's what they do, sister. It's just, it's really unfortunate, too. It's really it unfortunate. And I, I know but you know, that a, a if, person has one life to live. If they want to serve the devil, they have their right to do it as long as you don't do it. That's right. Absolutely. But Absolutely. know this, they're going to also um, go to the same eternal lake of fire that the devil um, is, is heading t- um, to himself. Yep. Yep. And also, I um, I just finished my semester in grad school, but I'm on the fence about whether or not I want to continue because I know the cost of the program that I'm in, and I also know that nothing that they're teaching me there is preparing me for what's really going to, you know, take place in this country. I mean, so you I, I got to do. Um, this is this master's program is two years, so I, I have a year left if I stay in. That's a decision you're going to, have to make for yourself. I guess the main thing you need to do is how the job market in your field. Non-existent. <laughs> oh boy, I don't know, sister. You have to just um, I don't know. Check it out. See what's going on. I have no. I don't even have an answer for that. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll I'll take it to the father, and whichever way he directs me to go, then that's what I'll do. 
Shalom, shalom, shalom. All right, so all right. Have... That's, that's all I have for today, Pastor. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. All right, we're going to Sister Rainey here in Tennessee, Sister Rainey. What you got, Sister Rainey? Uh-oh, wrong one. Sister Rainey, I'm sorry I hit the wrong button. Let me bring you back up again. Sister Rainey in Tennessee, are you there, Sister Rainey? Yes, sir. Did you hear me? No, go ahead. Okay, I have a couple of questions and, um, I mean, a couple of statements and one question, okay? Okay. Um, Is it okay if I thank everybody for um, ordering the CD? Sure. It's up to you. Well, I just want to thank everybody that are um, that are interested and that are contributing and you know blessing this ministry. Of course, it's it's just it's just awesome that you guys can do that. And thank you for the um, for the personal um, blessings as well. You guys enjoy. Take care. It's for you, so just enjoy it. Okay, that was my my thanks. Okay, um, I wanted to also thank uh, you and Sister Carol for all your hard work and you know making sure that people get the, the CD. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Sister Carol. You're welcome. Okay, now we get to the good stuff. Pastor, do you remember when we were talking about the pigskin um, covered Bibles? Yes. Okay. Okay, now that was incredulous to me. Like, I found that to be, like, really insane, right? Right. Well, one of my, one of my little pastime things that I like to do when I'm, when I'm at home um before I go to bed or something else, I like to go on to YouTube and I like to look at the different, um, they call the uh, hijab style head coverings that women wear. Uh huh. Um, just to get like different ideas, right? So I, I, I come across this woman and she's whispering and she's talking real low and she's, you know, you could tell it's like the early morning and she's getting ready for work and she's going to do a tutorial about how to wear a crown. Uh, hijab, how to how to put it on and everything, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is going to be so interesting. And she looked like a, she looked like a white woman. I'm not really sure, but um, she was talking really low, and she said she was saying uh, this that Angelus is behind her, and she's on her bed, and she's and and someone's behind her, and she wants to be quiet and she wants to talk low because she doesn't want to disturb Angelus. And finally, she's giving the tutorial, and in the middle of giving the tutorial, she wakes up Angelus. Well, Angelus happened to be a really big, fat pig. Are you serious? She had a pig sleeping in her bed. Hey, that's so Gentiles. So when I seen that, say again? I said, yeah. that's Gentiles. That's, that's, is that end time or what? I, I was just like... Oh, my God. Wait, I couldn't believe what I was seeing, so I had to post something. You know, of course, I had to post my opinion that it was a disgrace that, you know, to even adorn the hijab. I mean, I don't, I think that would be an offense to any religious. I mean, I, I, anyway, I just, it's getting worse. So the so when we said the pigskin leather-covered Bibles was pretty bad, well, guess what? It, it You know, I found out there was something out there that's worse. Mm. But I just mm. thought you I I should send you that um that video. Oh, you don't need to see that. I don't want I don't even want to put that in your mind, but I just couldn't believe that she was referring to this thing as though it was a person. Like I thought she was referring to her child or her husband, but it was her pet pig. Hey, so. the Bible says that in these last days that people would be without natural affection. That's disgusting, pastor. It sure That's is. Dis- Disgusting. I, anyway. I anyway. Believe, believe you me, I agree a thousand percent. Okay. Now I have another question for you. You mentioned something about the difference between the black and the white pope, and I was hoping that I wouldn't be throwing you two off course if you could explain that to me. Okay. The black pope is the pope that is the that runs behind the scene that is the head of the order of the Jesuits which a lot of people don't know too much about. They are the literal hit squad uh, for the Roman Catholic Church. The black pope, most people never see him. They never know him. Uh, The white pope is the one that you usually see sitting out up front, uh, that's in front of the TV screens and and the grandstands as if he's the pope. But the truth is he's really, truly not the pope. He's just like a figurehead, kind of like the president of the United States of America. Really? Yeah. Okay. 
So the, now, because I know this is going to sound like a retarded question, but the black pope doesn't have anything to do with complexion, right? No. Okay. No, nothing whatsoever. He's veiled and in secret. He's veiled and in secret. Okay. Has has nothing to do with the complexion of skin. That's just what he's called. That's his title. Hey, you know so the, something that all these heads of state, presidents, um, um, prime ministers, uh, religious people who are, you know what they all do? What's that? When you check it out, you do a, a, a Wikipedia or YouTube search and see the people who actually go get an audience with the Pope. You'll notice every one of them dress in black. And the Pope dresses in white. Yeah. Black, they dress in black as a sign of penance and repentance to the Mother Church. And the Pope being in white is supposed to be signifying purity. So these people, they kiss his ring, they bow down yeah. to him and call him Holy Father. And their black suit that they're wearing is just a sign to show you that these people are actually uh, receiving him as the Vicar of Christ here on earth earth they believe he's y'all on earth okay so whenever they like even our president goes to meet with the pope he's actually acknowledging pope being christ on earth yep now you have to understand that this stuff is done in secret behind closed doors and when they get finished going through the ceremony uh, what they're doing behind closed doors then they come out in front of the tv cameras and then they grandstand before each other so so now they all kiss his ring they all call him holy father and they wow. all bow down before him. Mm. Okay. Listen, I'm sorry to um, give you know to keep throwing all this knowledge on you, sister. <laughs> no, I mean it's okay. I mean you know, Pastor, I had to grow up sometime, and you know, I'm just grateful for it because Yahweh is just He's guiding us in the way of truth, and and if it's the truth, well, you know, like you always say, we are in the university of the painful truth, and it it's just. It's terrible. It's it's a terrible, like, yeah, it's an inconvenient truth. It's very terrible. I don't, but I'd rather know the truth than to live a lie. Yeah, people have a lot to learn. I mean, I think that people sooner or later will figure out the reason why I'm so passionate. Oh, I got excited when you said you're quickly becoming the most hated <laughs> personality on YouTube. I was like, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I don't mind that. No, I know you don't. That's awesome. Pastor, I love you, Pastor. All Thank right. Thank you for answering my questions. Bless you, Pastor. All right. uh, love you, too. Be encouraged. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. That was Sister Rainey. Um, I always ask some very good questions. Ask. Now, let me see what we got here. We got Sister Kathy in North Carolina here. Uh, let me see who else I got. Let me see. I had somebody else that was holding for quite a little, some time. I guess they done decided to let go. Here, let me go to yeah, Sister Kathy in North Carolina because we had a few phone calls. We got a lot of people in the queue tonight. Uh, you just have to be patient, Saints. Hallelujah. Uh, Sister Kathy in North Carolina, nine one zero. How you doing, Sister? Hi, how are you doing, Pastor Dale? I'm sorry, oh, I'm, I'm still on. laughing about the pig. <laughs> it's just off the chain, sister. It's just off the chain. I'm sorry. These folks are sick. These folks sick. Yes, they are. I wasn't expecting her to say that. Man, I... I thought she was going to say, like, another woman or something. I don't know. It's just not a pig. I'm <laughs> uh, it's, it's so crazy that you have to laugh. I guess because I'm like in tears right now. Anyway, anyway, okay. I have a um a, a couple of statements to make um myself, and I figure I call now because um, I'm so busy during the day. And you're so busy during the day. It's I'm feel kind of uncomfortable calling you your house, so <laughs> I'll use this venue for right now. But um. First, I'd like to say that, you know, we really love you and we adore you and Sister Carol and how you guys set the model there. It's straightway for us to follow. And that's what, um, especially the new saints that are coming in, hold on to Pastor Dow, Sister Carol, 
straight way is your model. If you have any questions, call them. And I say this because, Pastor, there was a woman who was on Facebook, and she posted up a pair of all of these fancy six-inch heels and, I mean, really, really fancy, fancy looking. And she was talking about how she still liked to wear her heels, these heels. And I'm like, okay, now this is supposed to be an Israelite sister, all right? Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, 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 I shared the picture, but I put above the picture that I shared that, um, you know, many moons ago I thought that, this, that these were stunning. Now they repulse me. And she's like that. They do. They repulse me. Um, it's not my spirit to be a harlot anymore. So um, I don't look at them as stunning. And, I mean, I get, the Jezebel showed her face, because goodness gracious, she posted up, got smart with me and everything, and told me, you know, where in Scripture does it say you don't have to wear, I mean, that you're not allowed to wear heels. And, um, you know, she, she just got really nasty. Just a little nasty, but still nasty. <laughs> about it, you know, and it's like, you know, for new sisters that are um, coming on board, you know, and like with your saying with how you're getting so fed up with um, saints who are falling away and just acting a fool and things like that, so on and so forth and everything, you know, um, us as the Israelite family who are really following the truth and keeping the commandments, um, we need to realize that we have to set the role, um, you know, also, you know, straightway is the head, yes, um, for setting the role, but we also have to follow so that other new saints see that. And, you know, and I put up that, um, I mean, like years and years ago, I used to make outfits for porn stars and strippers and erotic fashion shows. I used to do that. That's how I made my living. And I, you know, I, I told her, and I was, hope, I was hoping that other sisters were um, reading this, that men are very visual. You have to be careful. You can be wearing a burqa, but if you have on high heels like that, men look at those high heels. And then they're thinking about your calves and your thighs, and they're working their way up. Next thing you know, you're naked in their mind. You know what I mean? So uh, modesty from head to toe. Honor Yahweh and your husband from head to toe. That's all I have to say about that. Um, all right. Sounds good to me, sister. Yeah. But wait, wait, wait. One more thing. I'm sorry because I know. I'm, I'm sorry. One more thing. <laughs> With the schools. And there was a lady who called in and said that her family went, and I understand they're pagan. They do whatever they want to do. Um, but... If we have any new saints on here, I could tell you right now, you'd be amazed. If you are one of those parents who really stick to your guns with the with these doctors, if you're still in that kind of system, with these doctors in these schools, no, your children do not have to be vaccinated to attend school. Um, here in North Carolina, and you could check out in your own state, you could simply go online, print out a, a, a vaccine exempt form, you sign it yourself, and you hand it into the doctor's office. After that, it is done. You have nothing to say about it. They can talk all they want to. You keep silent. And you hand that into the school, and the school cannot say anything. Okay? Um, and people need to understand that, and they will back off. It's kind of like you got to be a tiger mama um, if mm -hmm. you're still in the system. But the best thing is homeschooling. So. That's basically all I wanted to say. And Shabbat Shalom to all of the saints. The Joseph Sakara, I love her, and I'm sending out a package on Monday for you guys. <laughs> all right, so to Kathy, Shabbat Shalom. Okay, bye. I love you. Bye, I love you too. You know, um, the, the world has gone mad, literally. It, and it's gone to hell in a proverbial handbasket, and that's just the truth. It's just the truth. Let's go to Brother Ron, then we hit um, Brother Frank. In um, Washington State. Let's go to Brother Ron in New Jersey first. Brother Ron, Shabbat Shalom, brother. How you doing? Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom, uh, Straightway Saints. Shabbat Shalom, Saints scattered abroad. 
First and foremost, I wanted to call to apologize about me not being able to make it down the straightway. Well, uh, you know, you'll be able to make it whenever you can. Yeah, yeah, Pastor. It's just I stretch myself beyond measure just trying to, <laughs> with everything going on, I really just wanted to try to get down there and to get out of this society for a while and, uh, for a while and get a breath of fresh air in me. But, um, as long as I stick in the world, I'll be. I'll, as long as I stick in the word, I'll be okay until until Passover. But uh, yeah, willing, I'll, I'll, I'll try to get down there before then. But um, yeah, I was listening to a lot of things that the saints were saying and um, what's going on as far as uh, society is concerned. And um, it's not surprising. It's, it's not surprising, Pastor. You know, uh, as as time goes by, the world's going to get worse more and more as the day of the Most High approaches. And um, the pig in the bed, like you yeah. said, that that's 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 what heathens do. I mean, in this culture, in this culture, in this American culture, it's, it, they eat pork as if it's regular life, but you know, it's some people consider it a delicacy, but like you said uh, before in your teaching, it's, it's the same, it's the same um, empire as it always was. Rome, it's the Roman Empire, and they always ate pork, so they're not going to stop eating pork, you know. And as far as those, uh, as far as the Catholic Church is concerned, they're all going to burn in the lake of fire. You know, the, the the white pope and the black pope both going down. Yeah, all going beyond the lake of fire. It's, 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 I just, I pray the Most High that His children come out of her before, before it's too late. Times, times ticking down, and it's, it's getting real short. And you can definitely feel it in the air with everything that's going on and the way society is just eroding. It's eroding at a faster pace than it's been eroding uh, in the last past couple of years with all these situations with their, with, with their government doing and, and, and murdering people and. You know, and that's just the most high hardened in their hearts that you read constantly in the scripture. And it, it's the beautiful thing about knowing the scripture is now when you when you read it, and then it's like just like you like you said uh, when you uh, you you the last the last service you had the last uh, study scripture you had you uh, you read it and you gave an example and through the scripture. Of exactly what you what you read, and it's like you could do the same thing if you fast forward it to today in society. You can see the same thing you were speaking about. Uh, if you sit up there and you read about him hardening the hearts of the Pharaoh, you can see these people's hearts becoming harder and harder every day. And and one thing that stuck out with me, I, I would want to I wanted your opinion on this. Um, with the hardening of the heart. Now, in the last day, it says they will repent of of them worshiping foreign gods. I would, you know, how you would watch like uh, videos of of, of uh, Gaza being bombed and and different places being being bombed, and they're just screaming out Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Or you got the Jews that's praying to their Jewish God, and could that tie into anything there? Sure, because I think that that. That um, all of these people, they may believe that they're worshiping the one true uh, Yahweh Elohim, but they're not. I mean, they're just, they're just not, brother. Man is inherently religious, and he's going to worship something, brother. That's all there is to it. But but it's only the Israelite, um, the Most High, um, you know, that, that, that we are the ones. We're the ones that have, we are monotheistic. And we're the only one to have the one true Elohim, brother, so... Like I said, you know, these pagan religions, is even written through Scripture that they're going to worship devils, and they're going to keep on doing it. Ain't nobody going to stop it either, because that's just the way that they are. I'm just concerned about us. Exactly, exactly. It, it, it blew my mind when um, it actually dawned on me this week about how much of a... Because you said it over and over. You, you say it over and over, but for some reason this week... It really hit me hard about this is about rulership. This is about a kingdom, and I've always been I've always been a type to watch you know old fashioned movies that do with kings, and and um, I'm I'm not really that much for modern day movies, but uh, 
about you know about about kingdoms. I, I love watching movies about kingdoms, like like you uh, recommended Braveheart, so on and so yep. forth. And then when you get it, when you take that and you just understand, that's what you're talking about. You're talking about an actual kingdom. You're not talking about when you read the Bible. It's not. You know, like you said, it's you're not going up to a, the big pie in the sky. You're going. This is a kingdom. This is about rulership. This is and and there's going to be kings and there's going to be high priests and he's going to be ruling. This and to to somebody uh, uh, like us, that's that's unbelievable. But to those who don't understand, you know, they they. It's hard for them to comprehend, but that really dawned on me this week, and it's really sticking in my, it sticks in my heart now. It's really sticking in my heart about it being about rulership and about being a kingdom, and and just thinking about what how that kingdom is going to be when that kingdom comes. Uh, just, just you know, I don't want to say really fantasizing, but just trying to picture it mentally about that kingdom. But I'm not going to hold you up. I'm going to let you go and. Once again, enjoy your Shabbat and the straightway saints and all the Israelites scattered abroad. Enjoy your Shabbat also. All right, Shabbat Shalom, Brother Ron. Shabbat Shalom. All right, going to Washington State, Brother Frank. Brother Frank, how you doing, Brother Frank? Shabbat Shalom, man of Yah. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Elders are straight way, mothers are straight way, sisters are straight way, brothers are straight way. All my brothers and sisters scattered. Um, Pastor, I, I want to um, comment or question, have a couple questions concerning some of the topics this evening. Uh, first one being um, the Jews, the Jews in that are currently occupying the land of uh, Israel, and I have some some Christian doctrine that still. Um, you know, in my mind about who those people are, and and that is Ezekiel that re, that, that relates to Ezekiel thirty eight and thirty nine about um, Gog, and I'm wondering. Well, I was I was taught when when in, in, in Christianity that uh, the Russians are going to come out of Russia and they're going to attack the chosen people who are now being regathered in the land. And this is uh, a sign that the the the, um, the man of sin is about to come on the scene and set up peace and et cetera, et cetera. And I'm wondering who I, I just I just read over Gog, or excuse me, Ezekiel 38 and 39 uh, this past week. And I'm wondering who is Gog, and um, when when does that take place? The way I read it. The, do you have your ahead, Bible sir. with you, Brother Frank? Yes, I do. Go to Genesis, the 10th chapter. So, uh, if you're going to take me to the table of nations, which I know that you are, Pastor, he he is a uh, a son of Yepheth. I know that. Right. Um, yep. So, so, so go ahead, sir. Yeah, I was going Genesis 2. 10, I mean, Genesis 10, 2. Yes, sir. The sons of Japheth, the sons of Gomer and Magog and Media, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, and Taris. Now, when you go over to Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, you notice, um, now sometimes names change over a period of time, but it's still representing the same people. So when you go over here to Ezekiel 38, and it says, Son of man, set thy face against Gog and the land, you hear that? And the land of Magog. All right, the land of Magog. All right, look, check this out. And the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal and prophesied against them. Now, <clears throat> the Bible teaches that the Most High Yah is the only one that is going to gather the scattered Israelites, the scattered Hebrews from the four corners of the earth. Yes, sir. Are you following me? They have made up. Um, the doctrine uh, about he's going to gather these people into the land and, and, and what they've done, they've practiced replacement theology and they've done twisted and warped and distorted the minds of people. And they they have put like the battle of Armageddon and, and the battle at the end of this thing and they've jumped ahead and said that these are the people who are being gathered into this land, which they're wrong. 
which they're wrong flat out because it totally disagrees with the prophecies of the book according to what the prophets have said. But like I said earlier before, um, it is the European nation, all of those that are European descent and European nations um, that are the heads of those states. For instance, the Jews came out of Russia, Georgia, and then they ended up in Germany. So they have a seed up there. Not every one of them are sitting there in that land of Palestine. So you, you're looking at all these nations. The Bible is telling us that these nations that are there now, that's why I use the symbolism in Daniel like the bear, the lion, the leopard. It's letting us know uh, exactly in prophecy who these nations are and who they, they're going to be that's going to end up attacking um, the Most High Yah's people in that land. Am I making sense? Yes, sir. Um the the reason I asked the question, Pastor, is that you know I'm reading again. I'm reading over Ezekiel 38, and I, I a thought came into my mind: is who is in the land now, right. Gog? Because the because Ashkenaz, according to the Table of Nations, is a son of uh, Gomer, who is right. a son of um, Yefat, yep. and I was reading, particularly, I'm reading verse 9 of 38, and it says, Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy bands, and the many people with thee. Mm -hmm. And when I'm reading that, I, 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 I hearken to that map that you have shown many times of, in 1948, the color red in the land of Palestine. And all of a sudden, over the years, it grows to consume it like a like a storm cloud, right? And again, because because these people, these Ashkenazi Jews, who say they are Israel but do lie, they are in the land they, that Gog has already come into the land. Is, is that a is that a, a, a misappropriation of the scripture of the scriptures? No, no, it's not because when you go to verse eighteen, it says, "And it shall come to pass." Uh, at the same time, when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, say yes, the Elohim, that my fury shall come up in my face. So no, you're you're, you're actually on point too. But it's actually also it, it, remember prophecy is also dual. So you know, like I said, not all of these Jews today are dwelling there in that land or make their land their own land. They, they, these people are scattered uh, in all the yes, nations sir. of the earth, ruling. So, but yes, sir, you are right on point with these people already occupying the land and coming up against the land of Israel and the and the um, um, uh, the people of those lands. So, yes, they are firmly entrenched in that land right now. That's a good observation. Yeah. Brother Frank. And and I also I also picked up was that uh, and you you've already alluded to it already is that this this prophecy it. It keeps talking about the land of Israel. It, it does not. I mean, a few places it talks about his people, Israel. But but when it's talking about God coming against the land of Israel, not necessarily the people of Israel. And that's. I mean, that's kind of what has happened. Not not kind of what's happened. That is what has happened. So, um, I just want. But remember, remember when the scriptures is speaking about the land of Israel. Um, don't mix it up with that little small geographical location that the um, Gentiles are calling Israel today. Remember that yes, map sir. I showed it? It said from the river Euphrates all the way up to this other river, that, and then all that big old region, that is the entire land of Israel. Yes, sir. Du duly noted, sir. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. Got you. So you look and see, is that is that land not a hotbed even still till now? Yes, sir. And and look, look at America, flat out being leading the charge, coming up against this, and 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 who are they doing it for? Gog and Magog, who is sitting there that is entrenched in that land. Yes, sir. You got that's very good observation, brother Frank. Very good. Thank thank you, Pastor. Um, and I just quickly want to touch on something that you also said this evening about. <clears throat> Uh, your patience, uh, essentially, let me paraphrase, your patience is wearing thin for these Israelites that will not do and that will not, um, uh, I guess, be faithful um, to, to the Father that redeemed them. Um, and, you know, I, I know that 
myself, uh, and I'll just speak for myself. I know that myself, I can hear you say that, and you know, I can, in, in um, you know, kind of an arrogant pride, say, "Yeah, Pastor, that's right." You, you tell them, Pastor. But then I, I read things in, in, uh, I, I read in in Second Second Timothy this this past week that really struck me, and I just kind of wanted to share it with the saints that may that may be thinking that that doesn't apply to them. Uh, Paul says, he's talking to, speaking to Timothy, and goes, Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. And I read that, and it hits me like a, well, like you said, two-ton heavy stick. Am I enduring all things? For for the elect's sake, and I mean that's a question I guess um, I, I have to answer to myself for myself and, and to my king. But I would encourage all the saints out there to ask them themselves that same question. So that's all I got, Pastor. I, again, uh, Shabbat Shalom to you um, and the uh, saints of Straightway. I love you, Pastor Dell. I love you, Pastor Dell. Shalom. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, Brother Frank. And love you dearly as well, my brother. <clears throat> brother Frank's a good brother. He always comes with some very thought provocative uh, observations that always end up in soundness and truth. And as a matter of fact, I, he just showed me something um, that in, in this particular um, speaking and talk right here. And I never looked at it from that angle. And of course, now it's going to cause me to actually go even deeper into it because, I mean, uh, Gog and Magog already in the land. Man, that is a very, very good sound observation and angle to actually come from. Thank you very much, Brother Frank. So that's the reason why we need to continue to keep having these questions and these these uh, talks because they really, truly do help bring out even the more so. You can tell when a man is studying the Word of Yah. You really, truly can. Hallelujah. All right, Brother Greg, there in Houston, Texas. Two one four. What you got, brother Greg? How you doing, Shabbat Shalom? Oh, Houston, Texas. Yeah, I guess. No, that's. Oh, this is the other Greg. How you doing, Greg? Good, but I'm pretty upset. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty. I'm pretty pissed off about what I heard on the news today. I mean, yeah, I understand, crazy. brother. I mean, matter of fact, no, I'm not pretty pissed off. No, I'm very, very pissed off. I was sitting around here reading the comments. And people, I just hear all these people just saying we ought to ban all guns and we ought to ban semi-automatic rifles. And one guy said nobody should be able to have a gun for any reason. Only the police and military should have them. Hmm. And at the well, NRA, good, good mindless minions. And at the NRA, and at the NRA is responsible for this. Some people on these comment boards on Twitter were calling for the repeal of the Second Amendment. And some of them we were calling for the death and the murder of the of the president of the NRA. It's pretty militant, isn't it? Yeah, just like you said, they're even more unstable with people that have guns. How in the world are we going to fire? How in the world? It just makes me wonder if I'm going, am I going to be able to even get one because of these, because of these, because of these loons saying we need to ban all guns. It's making me wonder if we even going to be, if I'm, if I'm going to be able to even get one. Um. Like I say, ready yourself for war. I mean, they were even called. They were called for the murder of the president of the NRA, and Obama was crying. That was just. That, that was just. That was just. I guarantee you they won't call that hate speech. What? Uh, calling for the murder of the president of the NRA. I guarantee the powers that be on the news media won't jump on that as hate speech. The hypocrites. I mean, these gun control rules, they, 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 they make me sick. Why don't we have doctor control or pharmacy control? Doctors will kill you quicker than anything. Yeah, I understand. Health. Oh, Lord. Y'all help us. All right, brother Greg. Hey, I appreciate you calling in, brother. To keep it together, though, okay? Okay, Pastor. Bye, Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Hallelujah. Let's go to uh, Ohio, Sister Jennifer, 419. It's Pastor Dow. How you doing, Sister? Hello. Hello. Hello, Pastor Dow. 
Yes. Uh, this is Sister Stephanie. Oh, Sister Stephanie. How in the world did Brother Saint get Jennifer? Okay. I don't doing? know. <laughs> it's been a while. I haven't talked to you in a while. You I'm remember? Uh, probably not. I talk to a lot of people. Okay. Sister Stephanie is one. Um, I, oh, yeah, I want to thank you for um, getting me connected with Brother Jermaine in Columbus. Okay. You're welcome. And, and Sister Deborah. All right. You're okay. <laughs> well, um, anyway, I was calling um, the, to just to say um, that with my husband and I, Kevin, we still – we keep you in our prayers, and we just want to um, encourage you to keep on putting the truth out there. And I tell you, we've really uh, been learning a lot. I mean, I tell you, when you're hearing the truth, sometimes it is hard to take in. But uh, I'm very grateful for it. I really am. And oh, um, and I hope one day I can be, you know, a true Israelite. Um, I'm working on it. Um uh, I do believe uh, what you've been saying and uh, is true. Everything lines up with the Word. Um, you know, I've been reading my Word much more than I ever have, and I tell you, it's been it's been a little hard for me because I've been told so many wrong things over the years and uh, just a whole lot of awful things. And I tell you, just coming to the truth and the knowledge, it you know is is it's just really a blessing. It's really a blessing, and I just want to be all I can be in the um, in the Most High. And you know, I've never been one to half do things and so forth. I've always been one to always try to do my best to please the Lord. But I thought I was pleasing the Lord in the past, but I was uh, far from it because I didn't have any knowledge of, you know, what I just believe what the pastor told me and the way he presented the word to us, and I just went by it. Ooh, that's kind of dangerous. <laughs> so now I know um, to go and read it for myself and keep rereading it and studying it and, and following along, um, like I follow along as you uh, present the word now, and I used to tell myself, well, I don't understand the King James, so, of course, uh, I had a house full of NIVs, which I did get rid of. Ooh, thank and, God for that. <laughs> yeah, I went through that list. Um, you had a teaching on it, and I was like, what? No way. And every scripture I tried to find, I couldn't find it. Mm. And I just couldn't believe it. I just really couldn't believe it. Yeah, a lot of times people think I'm exaggerating when I actually go through that. And, and sister, I was just getting warmed up on that video. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I'm glad I got rid of them. Yeah, I'm glad you yeah. had, too. <laughs> oh, I tell you, it's probably someone stuck on the bed or somewhere. And I'm still looking for them because, I, you know, I was just loading up on literature because I've always tried to search for the truth since I was a little child. You know, I didn't um, really go by, um, uh, I was one of those, I wouldn't say rebellious child, but when it came to God, if I saw my mother doing wrong, um, you know, I would I would say something about it. Of course, you know, I got some whoopings, but, you know, I just felt like, <laughs> you know, you can't tell me and you doing it. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yes, yeah, I got the weapons behind the book. <laughs> but, you know, that's okay. You know, and I still stand to that now. You know, I feel kind of isolated from my family, but, you know, I'm used to it. And the, the uh, more I get into the truth, yeah, the don't more worry about uh, separated it. we become. Yeah, don't worry about it. Um, it is, it's just, just the way it is when Israelites come to the truth. The first thing, first foes and first enemies you're going to have is they of your own household. Oh, yes. I appreciate that. I have one question. I want to hold you. Um, okay. Is it permissible to wear your wedding band? Um, if you go to my web page, I have a, an article and a write-up on wedding bands, but we don't wear wedding bands. Um, okay. We, we, okay. Wedding bands, are, as a matter of fact, 
I can take you way back over there in Genesis, the 35th chapter. Okay. I'll read, I'll read it to you real quick, okay? All right. This is 35, verse 1. And Yah said unto Jacob, Arise and go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make an altar unto Yah that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of, thy, of Esau thy brother. And Jacob mm-hmm. said unto his household and to all that were with him, look what he says, Put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean, and change your garments. Now, what we got to do is find out what these strange gods were. Is that right? Right. Now, look what he says. And let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto Yah, who answered me in the day of my distress, and was with me in the way which I went. And they gave unto Jacob, look and listen to this, all the strange gods which were in their hand, and the hmm. earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. So, rings, and of course, Isaiah, the third chapter, speaks against them. Um, it's all over the place. But, but rings and earrings were forbidden for Israelites to wear. There was a time that the Most High actually let them put them on them, but then they corrupted themselves just like the other nations, and he stripped them away from them again. Because, you know, we as Israelites, we, we're people that once we get a little bit of liberty or something, we don't know how to act. Okay, we pervert yeah. everything. We pervert everything, and so the Most High said, no, nah, forget it. Uh-uh, uh-uh, just cut it off. So, no, it, wearing rings and earrings are forbidden for Israelites. Okay. Now, okay. Christians, they, they can wear all the rings and earrings and, and, and all they want. They even got men out there that are wearing earrings today. Now, that one throws me. <laughs> yes, they do. Uh, one in each year. Sometimes think more. about it. Uh, you know, to, to number one, you you've got to already break the commandment. Um, when in the Torah, it says that you should not make no cuttings in your flesh for the dead, and you have to actually um, got to cut your flesh. You got to pierce your flesh. You literally got to put a hole in your flesh just in order to accommodate wearing earrings. Yes. Yes, you do. Yeah, it, and it, it, um, since then, um, I have gotten rid of all of my jewelry. And it was a ton of it. And uh, actually, I it. felt so much better when I did. Sell it and buy some gold and silver. <laughs> I didn't have anything real. Oh, <laughs> Just costume jewelry. Oh, okay. So All right. But uh, thank you for that, and um, we will certainly we will certainly go by that. And but how? One question though: How do you keep all of these people? I mean, some of them try to talk to you anyway, even if you have on a wedding band. But uh, how do we deal with that? As far as you know, um, you know, people, and you're married. And uh, people trying to approach you all the time because the first thing they do is look to see if you have on a ring. Well, I tell you one thing: our, our sisters don't have no problems with that whatsoever at all because our sisters are dressed modest. Okay. Our sisters never get approached by men, never. And we have some very attractive sisters um, that 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 do not have to make themselves up and look like the world. As a matter of fact, I live in a very racist county. And I get yeah. all kind of Israelite sisters that come up here and stuff, and, and they have never once had a man come and approach them because they're wearing tight pants, tight. Uh, see, if you dress like a whore, you look like right. a whore, you carry yourself like a whore, the men out there in the world are going to treat you like a whore. They're going to approach you like a whore. Yes, sir. I understand but, but if you're that. dressed like a modest Israelite, no, as a matter of fact, they even get honored up here. Uh, in this town, by now, sometimes people look at them like they're, you know, out of their rocker and crazy or something like that. But uh, <laughs> because they do not wear horse clothes and they do not present themselves as whores, um, therefore our sisters they don't wear wedding bands, but they have their head covers. And their head covering, according to our custom, is a sign of submission. Number one to Yah, and then number two to your husband. It's it's a showing yes. women that they are um, taken, that they are under the authority of their husband. So okay. hey, the, our sisters get respect. You can believe that. And we got some very, you know, you, you can tell a real beauty of a sister when she doesn't have to make herself up like Jezebel did. Yes, yes, yes. But not, not far as people are asking about men. 
Uh, men who wear earrings, I think they're a bunch of closet faggots and homosexuals. That's personal, <laughs> but I think that they are. They got some serious problems. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, can we wear watches? Are those permissible? Well, it's not what you call a jewelry or nothing like that. I mean, it would be like a band. A band is really something. To, uh, they say to take away different bands, but no, we, we don't have any prohibition against watches, and neither does the Torah because there was no such thing as watches then. But no, you know, people, we don't have any trouble with people wearing watches if they want to. Uh, I very rarely wear watches. I mean, the most time, if you ever see me, I have a watch on. If I do have one on, usually if I'm preaching or teaching, I'll take it off or something like that. But I very rarely wear any watches, but I do have one or two. Okay. Okay. Well, I thank you very much, sir, for everything, and uh, God bless you. We sure do love you, and we're praying for you. And please keep us in your prayers. It's, it's as you know, it's hard out here. It's All right. Oh, I tell you. <laughs> And, I right. re- and we really enjoy listening to you and, and being under your teaching. Well, keep listening so you can keep going. We sure on. will. You have a good I, night. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Um, I got a picture that Brother Chavez out in California sent, and it's a, it's a picture. I'll post a link down here uh, in the chat room. It's got President Barack Hussein Obama and Pope Benedict uh, discusses stem cells. Now, watch this. Watch this now. You know this, that his wife, Michelle Obama, she dresses just like a street whore. When she's here in America, she shows all her flesh and everything. Uh, all y'all in the chat room, look at this this link right here I just posted up that Brother Chavez gave me. You got Mich- Michelle Obama wearing a black head covering and a black dress, and she and her arms are covered. My wife had to come in here on this one. Sister Carol had to come in here on this one. Look, look, she got a look, a head covering on, all the way down to the middle of her back, and totally covered up from her neck all the way down. Look, huh? They like, look to see that devil of a pope right there, man. I tell you, the whole world is turned upside down. It's just gone way backwards. Ah, uh, boy, I tell you, I tell you. It, it's a sad, 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 sad thing. Ooh, I remember when I was a teen, I used to tell women, are you out of your mind for piercing your ears? You got problems or what? I sure did. I used to tell them that. Uh, anyway, uh, but there's Michelle Obama dressed in black. I told y'all about that dressed in black. Look at a, look at a Barack Hussein Obama dressed in white. They all cheesing um, to the, the vicar of the devil. Huh? Look at her in her all black modest. She dressed modest now, ain't she? Huh? I tell you what, I'll do a video about that. Huh? You got to go to the Pope to be modest, and then you, when you get away from um, your, your Father God, then you act like a whore and look like a whore and dress like a whore. I, I tell you, we all crazy. It just anyway, they doing what Gentiles do. That's just the truth. All right. Um, Calling number six two six six two six. This is Pastor Dow. You're on the Straight with Truth Radio broadcast. How may I help you? Hello, uh, my name's Stephen. I'm um, in Michigan, in uh, um, in the in the U.S. I'm from England, as you could probably tell. Yep. Can I ask you a question? A couple of things. You were talking about head covering um, for for women. Surely, um, the woman's hair, if it uh, extends beyond her shoulders, is her head covering. Well, that's a common teaching, and that's a teaching that comes from Christianity. Uh, but I can help you out more than anything, Stephen, if you would go to my website. Are you familiar with straightwaytruth.com? I am indeed, yes. Okay, if you go there, um, you'll see on the left-hand side, uh, matter of fact, that was probably one of the first uh, uh, newsletters that I did last year. Um, I did an in-depth study, probably about a 26-page newsletter just uh, on that and head coverings alone, it would answer. That would give you all the biblical references from Genesis to Revelations and why Paul talked the way that he did. And and I think if you read that newsletter, you can download that newsletter. You well, have, well, have a very good understanding about head coverings. Yes, I have read some of that, and I have also read some of the scripture. Um, and and the impression I get is that the the woman's head covering is is her hair. She doesn't need any additional head covering if it's beyond 
uh, the mantle of her shoulders in the same but way as a man. You can't read that in the Torah. You ain't going to find that in the Torah nowhere. All Israelite women always wore their hair, or hair veiled. Every one of them covered. So, but are you a Christian? I'm a believer in in Yeshua. Uh, well, I don't use the word Christian. Christians uh, a completely misused word in these uh, life and times because it automatically associates you with the pagan traditions. I'm I'm not a paganist in any way, shape, or form. It, it, you, there's no way that you could have read my newsletter and, and still have that same opinion. That is just totally impossible. In, in what respect? All right, I'll give you an example, okay? I'll give you an example. Uh, Genesis twenty four sixty four. All right, and Rebecca lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel, and she had said unto the servant, what man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. Why? Because she was getting ready to marry Isaac. She was betrothed. Hmm. Oh, that's, that's like I said, there's no way that you could have read my newsletter and come to that same conclusion and understand the Torah when I just got finished speaking about head coverings. Well, no, but I, I, what I said was I've read some of the scriptures and I, and I don't I don't believe that uh, head coverings are, um, are required in addition to uh, if a woman's got long hair. Well, in, the same, in, the, in the same way as I don't think that uh, somebody who's um, uh, talking the word of God or teaching should wear um, head coverings if he's a man. I understand. Because that, that's an abomination. But but you do that. You have a cap on, and I saw you at a a, a meeting some time back, and you had uh, like a hoodie on, and surely that's an abomination. A hoodie? You did. What is a hoodie? Like a hooded top with the baseball no. cap underneath. No, you have never saw me teach the Word of God you under were talk- a hood. You were talking and looking down at the Bible at the time. You've had a baseball cap on. You do it online. Oh, I've seen you. Sure. I can read the Bible out of there, something like that. But anyway, but that's hey, teaching, have a good that's night. Really, have a good night and, and go back to your Gentile ways. Uh, go back to your Christianity ways and keep your Eastern perspective because it's obvious that you don't read the Bible. And that's all there is to it. I don't even know why you can come over here. Um I mean, you ain't got nothing, no scripture, no nothing. I tell you, just, boy, they all come out, don't they? They all come out, don't they? He's from England, and he thinks he has an actual good, he thinks he has a good understanding of the scripture. This is what you call people who are contentious and don't believe the truth. And no matter what you can say, no matter what you say, no matter what you say, there's no answer um, that is going to be sufficient. Now, if you choose... To believe that a woman's hair is uncovered, and that's none of my business. That's between you and the Most High. But I'm a pastor, and I guarantee he's not a pastor, and I'm a pastor after Yah's own heart. And like I said, there's no way you could read that newsletter and come to the conclusion that any woman that is married should be walking around with her head uncovered. That's an abomination according to Israelite customs, period, point blank. That's all there's to it. Now, have you married? You want your wife to run around with her head uncovered? Have fun. Um, that, that's a, hey, y'all have fun. Keep doing it. Ain't none of my business. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. You want your wife to run around uh, as if she's shaving and bald? Then go ahead and do it. None of my business. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, brother. And then we forget all about the covering, who we're covered by, which is Christ. i tell you what. Anyway, I guess you got to have one every once in a while. you got to have one every once in a while. That's just the truth. And then I guarantee you that he doesn't have a modest wife. I guarantee you that his his his, his wife talks back to him, um, runs the house, or he, if he even have a wife, I don't know. I tell you, people just off the chain today, just literally off the chain. All right, where we at? All right. Well, anyway, looks like we didn't had a, a pretty decent uh, phone calls here tonight. That's for sure. And you notice he didn't even address what I just got finished reading. I just started from the very beginning. 
See, that's how you know these people ain't Israelites. Because if he was an Israelite, he would acknowledge that that or he, if he was a Hebrew, he would acknowledge that Isaac is a Hebrew. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the father of faith, and Isaac is the a children of the promise, child of the promise. And if this woman, Rebecca, turned around and veiled herself when she was unveiled and she's getting ready to meet the man who's, who is going to be her husband, you see how people do? They, they, they'll twist, warp, distort, wrestle the scriptures to their own destruction just in order to meet their own personal, their own personal Western mindset. And it still ain't going to change nothing. Ain't going to change nothing at all. All you Israelite women out there, I honor you women who cover your heads. Y'all look so beautiful. Y'all look so beautiful, and you're just so obedient to the Father. You got a great reward coming. Don't let these hookers and prostitutes and these Jezebels over here in this Western society rob you of your reward of modesty, rob you of your reward of um, um, honoring your husband and especially your Messiah, Yahshua HaMashiach. Don't let them do that. Y'all be at peace. Hallelujah. Anyway, pretty decent broadcast here tonight, and that's just the truth. I hope each and every last one of you, or each and every last one of you, uh, have a wonderful night, and we'll see y'all tomorrow morning, be the Father's will, um, in the tabernacle. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. The king, the king, the king, the king, the king is coming. Uh Uh-oh, look at him looking.